of Congress. Congressman Adam Schiff represents Burbank and is chairman of the House Intelligence Committee. Congressman, welcome back to The Issue Is. Thank you. Great to be with you, Alex. You were one of our first guests on our first show, which we will always be grateful for. So much has happened since. Uh, one of the big stories of this week, the president signing this deal to avoid a government shutdown, but also declaring a national emergency. Do you think he has the right to declare a national emergency when it comes to the border and border wall funding? No, a declaration of emergency is a patently unconstitutional act. You couldn't have a weaker case uh, for such a declaration. This is a matter that the Congress has considered. It has reached a bipartisan agreement on. That bipartisan agreement did not include uh, the billions the president wanted to build a wall. Uh, and to consider that an emergency, well, if it, every time a president didn't get what he wanted from Congress, it was an emergency, we would be in a constant state of emergency. Uh, it does show, though, what contempt uh, the president has for our system of checks and balances, for the rule of law in our institutions. Uh, and the question will be, do the GOP members share that contempt? Uh, Mitch McConnell was reported to have urged the president not to do this, uh, talk about uh, and talked about uh, what a mistake it would be uh, and concerns Republicans had over it. Uh, he has now evidently done a complete 180. Uh, and tragically, I think this is what we have seen the last two years, and that is when the president has taken action, uh, really jeopardizing the foundations of our rule of law, the GOP has stood silent or acquiescent in the face of it. In addition to being a member of Congress, you're also an attorney. Uh, this is going to be challenged in the courts, could end up in the Supreme Court. Uh, how do you think the court's going to rule on this? I think they'll almost certainly rule against him. Unless they decide they're going to completely defer to the president, and I don't think there's any sound basis for doing so, but I don't think the president is necessarily looking for uh, a win in court. I think what he's looking for is cover to withstand the criticism he's getting from Rush Limbaugh or Ann Coulter or any of the other sort of right-wing pundits. But that is also not a basis to declare an emergency. And now he gets the government open as well and doesn't have to deal with the fallout of another shutdown. Uh, let's talk for a moment about your investigation. You're leading the House Intelligence Committee investigation of the president and any potential connections with Russia. There was some reporting this week that the Senate investigation has not found evidence of direct collusion between the Trump campaign and Russia. Have you? Uh, we've certainly seen evidence of collusion, and some of that is direct and some of it is circumstantial. And uh, it appears on the Senate side there's a difference of opinion between the chair and the ranking member. Uh, that is not, uh, uh, you know, all that unexpected. But the reality is the evidence is in plain sight. When the Russians approached the campaign through the president's son, offering dirt on Hillary Clinton as a part of what it described as the Russian government effort to help the Trump campaign and the Trump campaign's reaction was, we would love that help. That's evidence of collusion. When the president is trying to make the most lucrative business deal of his life, building a Trump Tower in Moscow, seeking Kremlin help for it, reportedly offering inducements to Putin to get it, while misleading the country uh, and advocating for a change relationship with Russia that might include relaxation of sanctions on Russia, that's a form of collusion. When the national security advisor, Mike Flynn, is meeting secretly or talking secretly with the Russian ambassador to undermine U.S. sanctions on Russia and lying about it, that's another form of collusion. So I could go on and on to say that you don't see evidence of it means you're not willing to look at what is in plain sight. Let's talk for a moment about the issue of guns. Uh, this week, the one-year anniversary of the Parkland school shooting, the worst uh, campus massacre in American history. Democrats passing legislation to deal with the issue of background checks, which is widely supported by the American people. Any chance at all that Republicans in the Senate and the president actually uh, pass this and then sign it? Uh, yes, uh, but it's not going to happen unless we keep up the pressure. Things have changed since Parkland. Uh, they have changed largely in the state legislatures around the country that have passed new laws since then. But we're seeing new momentum uh, in the Congress. And one of the things that tells me we are reaching a tipping point uh, is that so many people ran for the House of Representatives in the midterms, not by running away from the gun issue, but by running towards it and saying, I am going to embrace common sense reforms like universal background checks, uh, even in parts of the country where uh, candidates often try to avoid that issue. That tells you something is changing. 
So we're going to take up this bill. We're going to pass this bill. We're going to put pressure on the Senate to pass this bill. Uh, and those GOP members that are uh, going to oppose it are going to have to answer for it with their constituents. Well, we've talked a lot about serious issues. We also like to have some fun on this show. We want to play a game with you called The Name Game because I know um, you love a little Beyonce, right? I mean, Destiny's Child is your is your jam, right? Uh, so this oh, is this without is, a question. Yeah, this is the name game, uh, which means we're going to say some names of some famous figures, and the first word that pops into your mind, or short phrase that pops into your mind when you hear it. Okay. All right. Okay. Uh, President Donald Trump. Uh, he doesn't appear to like me very much. <laughs> Vice President Mike Pence. How would you like a job where every day you have to look adoringly at Donald Trump? I, I feel great sympathy. <laughs> Speaker of the House, Nancy Pelosi. A uh, fantastic leader, and uh, what a remarkable job she has done in these negotiations uh, over the president's uh, wasteful wall. Uh, the president's former personal attorney, Michael Cohen. Uh, cooperating with us, and I'm grateful that he is trying to make amends. Uh, Representative... Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. Uh, dynamic, impressive, uh, and I think the GOP underestimates her at their peril. Democratic Congresswoman Elon Omar. Uh, you know, difficult start, uh, obviously worrying comments. Uh, she has apologized. I appreciate the apologies that she's made. And finally, your counterpart on the Intelligence Committee, Republican Congressman Devin Nunes. Uh, that's the 